Praise God. We're going to continue our ministry of the gift of the Spirit marathon with faith. And faith is considered one of the three power gifts, which are faith, healing, and miracles. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 12, 9 to 11, to another faith by the same spirit. There are three gifts of vocal inspiration, tongue, interpretation, and prophecy. These gifts are the manifestation of God speaking through us. There are three gifts of revelation, distinguishing between spirit, word of knowledge, and word of wisdom. These gifts are the manifestation of God revealing things to us, things of the natural world or of the spiritual realm. Finally, there are three gifts of power, gifts of faith, working of miracles, and gifts of healing. These gifts are the manifestation of God's power working through us. God desires to speak to the people of this world most of the time. He speaks through his believers. God wants to reveal many things to his world. Again, he wants to do this through believers. God yearns to reach the needs of this generation, but his work through his people. Each of the gifts of the Spirit are a manifestation of the Spirit, nine separate ways in which he operates through the body of Christ. Praise God. There has been teaching in the past that each believer is to operate in one gift or maybe two. To accept this teaching, we must ask ourselves one question. Why would the Holy Spirit reveal through a revelation gift the presence of a demonic spirit or spirit of cancer but deny us his power through one of his power gifts to cast that spirit out? Praise God. The operation of the gift of the Holy Spirit in our lives is limited only by ourselves. What are we willing to allow God to do through us? How much time are we willing to give to Him? How clean is the vessel we present to Him for His use? 1 Corinthians 12 and 4, the Amplified Version. Now there are distinctive varieties and distributions of endowments, extraordinary powers, distinguishing certain Christians due to the power of divine grace operating in their soul by the Holy Spirit, and they vary, but the Holy Spirit remains the same. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. As we have studied before, each group of gifts work closely together. We are to speak in tongues when we receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. That equips us to operate in the first gift. Then we are to pray for the gift of interpretation. That is the second gift. Then we are to desire to prophesy. That is the third gift. Then we move into the second group of gifts, the gift of revelation. Through these, God reveals to us many things. One area of revealed knowledge has to do with needs in our lives or the lives of those about us. Then we move into the power gifts, which are a releasing of God's power to meet those needs. The gift of faith is a supernatural faith for a specific time and purpose. It is a gift of power to accomplish a certain task in whatever situation you are in at that particular time. The gift of faith is given when needed for a specific task immediately or in the very near future. 
when the word of wisdom is given telling us how a task should be done, it will speak or spark the gift of faith into operation to boldly carry out the task according to what God has already planned. Praise God. Have you ever received the word from God to do something and you didn't have the means or the operation to do the thing that God would have you do? And it may have taken you some time before you got it done. You got it done, but you were sad because you felt that you didn't get it done in a timely manner. Well, I'm here to tell you that when God tells you to do something, sometimes it's futuristic. And you may not have the means, but he, was, he is preparing you early so that you'll know when the time comes that it's time to move. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The gift of faith is received by operations of revelation gifts. Supernatural faiths come upon the believer when the gift of the word of wisdom reveals a demonstration of God's power, which is about to be manifested. It releases us to boldly act upon the revelation which we have just received. Often, the supernatural gift of faith is involved in the operation of the power gifts. It may be manifested in a powerful commanding sentence such as Jesus said to the storm, Peace be still. Or as he said, Lazarus, come forth. Upon receiving a revelation of what God wants done through the word of wisdom, the gift of faith will come upon the believer to finish the task. This special faith is realized when the plan of how to proceed is revealed by a word of wisdom. This releases the believer to boldly act on what has been given to him by God. It is a time in a believer's life when he's not striving to believe. He knows what God's word says, what God's will is, and that he has the supernatural power of God abiding in himself to bring a thing to pass. When the gift of faith is present, the words which are spoken are directly inspired by the Holy Spirit and have the same authority as if God were speaking them. The results of the gift of faith may be a gift of working miracles or of healing. There can be many responses to the gift of faith. It brings glory to God. It causes others to believe in God. It brings amazement and fear. The reality of a living God involved in the affairs of men is demonstrated. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The faith by which we accept Jesus as our Savior is a gift from God which comes through hearing the Word of God. Ephesians 2.8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not from yourself. It is the gift of God. Faith is listed as one of the fruit of the Spirit. This could also be translated faithfulness. It is a faith which grows in the life of a Christian to establish him in spiritual character. Galatians 5, and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. The law is done away with when we work with these characteristics. And in order to operate the gifts, you need love. Praise God. There is a general everyday type of faith which comes through knowing God, knowing his word, and believing. It is having faith that what he has said he will do. This faith is strengthened every time we pray 
and receive the answer to that prayer. Mark 11.24 says, Therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus operated often in the gift of faith. The following are just a few of the times. In Luke 7, 12 through 15, as he approached the town gate, a dead man was being carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and a large crowd from town was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart went out to her, and she said, and he said, don't cry. Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. The gift of faith. Even as Jesus was told of the sickness of Lazarus, he knew that Lazarus' death and resurrection would be for a time of teaching of his own death and resurrection. John eleven forty one to 44 So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. The ultimate gift of faith was that of Jesus laying down his life to pay the penalty for the sins of all mankind and knowing that he would be resurrected. John eleven twenty five and 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. There was miracles working. In Mark 4, 37-41, a furious quail came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up. We broke the wind and said to the wave, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Bless God. Thank you, Jesus. We often overlook the fact that Jesus, as a man, walked on water. He operated on this earth as a man, not as God. Too often we look at Peter as a symbol of failure in this incident. It would be good for us to remember that Peter did just as Jesus did. He accomplished the work of Jesus on this occasion even if only for a short time. Matthew 14, 25-32 During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, 
Tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. Cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? We are not to doubt. Especially when we're operating in the gift of faith. Praise God. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. Thank you, Jesus. The gift of faith can operate in a seemingly destructive way for the protection of the body of Christ. Perhaps the body of Christ, because of sin in their lives, lives in their own lives, or fear of what people will say, or because of feelings of inadequacies, have been reluctant to operate in these areas. Without the gift of revelation operating in our lives, it's impossible to operate in the gift of faith in the following manner. Jesus cursed the fig tree. In Matthew 21, 19, seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately, the tree withered. Praise God. After Ananias had dropped dead, Peter spoke a curse on Sapphira as the gift of faith was released by a word of wisdom. Acts 5, 9, and 11. Peter said to her, How could you agree to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young man came in and finding her dead, carried her out and hurled her beside her husband. Great fear ceased the whole church and all who heard about these events. So please stop telling your church that God will not give a word that doesn't seem right. He, sin, he sends a word of correction. He warns his people first. And when the people do not adhere to the warning, they curse themselves. And the next step is losing their internal life. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. For many. Thank you, Lord. Because we know right now there are books in heaven, books of life. And Jesus are standing before the books, cleaning them. And many people who we think are going to be in those books will not be in the book of life. Praise God. In 1 Samuel 17, 32, 38 through 40, 45 through 49, David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Then Saul dressed David in his own tunic he put a coat of armor on him and a brass helmet on his head. David fastened on his sword over the tunic and tried walking around because he was not used to them. I cannot go in these, he said to Saul, because I am not used to them. So he took them off. Then he looked or took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream,
put them in the pocket of his shepherd's bag and with his sling in his hand approached the Philistine. Goliath he is called. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. This day the Lord will hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it is not by sword or spear that the Lord saves for the battle is the Lord's and he will give all of you into our hands and again God has given us spiritual armor against the powers of the enemy and he's given us instruction through David what we need to say and what we need to do it's no new news we have to read the word and learn what the Father is telling his people to do. Praise God. We can go on and talk about Daniel in the lion's den and his faith, or Shatnat, Shatrat, Mishat, and the Bendigo. Talk about the fury of fire they were thrown in. Praise God. In order to operate the gift of the of the spirit we need total obedience to God and this is what the stories allow us to understand so that we can demonstrate for ourselves and for the people of God people are crying out for power in the church and God is calling out for obedience of his people. Amen. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed. And the fourth looked like a son of the gods. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the brazen furnace and shouted, Shatrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire. When God is for you, who can be against you? Even King Nebuchadnezzar understood. He had to get those men out of that furious fire. Thank you, Jesus. The gift of faith is given to the body of Christ for many reasons. As we learn to operate in it, we will be used by God for the protection of ourselves, those around us, and the body of Christ. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. With faith, nothing is impossible because when the gift of faith is operating, God's power for miracles will be released. We begin by exercising our own faith. When we come to the end of that faith, very often this special gift of faith will be released when God gives us a word of wisdom.